Hello friends, welcome back to our channel Neat Biology Expert. I am Dr. Parveen. In this lecture series, we are studying Class 12 Biology Chapter Reproductive Health. In this particular lesson, we are going to study about two most important virally transmitted sexual transmitted infection that is genital warts and genital herpes. So let's see first what is genital herpes. Genital herpes is an important sexually transmitted infection. This is caused by the virus that is the causative agent is herpes simplex virus. In short form this is called as HSV herpes simplex virus. This herpes simplex virus is of two types, okay. So, the first one is called HSV type 1, that is herpes simplex virus type 1 and second one is the HSV type 2. So, in this HSV type 1, it causes oral herpes and type 2 causes genital herpes. So, we are categorized, categorizing this virus based on where it causes the infection. That means on which part of the body it affects, okay. So, oral herpes and genital herpes. You should always remember that. So, type 1 only will cause oral herpes and type 2 only will cause genital herpes. Clear? Fine. So, let us see the first one, HSV type 1. So, the herpes simplex virus type 1, it causes oral herpes. So, what happens here? It causes blisters in the mouth and the face region. Okay. So, look at the picture here. This is called as blisters that is oral herpes. So, the patient will have blisters in and around the mouth region anywhere in the face but it predominantly present in and around the mouth region down here or up here in the sides like this. Okay. So, this is the oral herpes. Here, the oral infection occurs in the childhood. So, this is important. So, for majority of the people, this herpes simplex virus infection, it occurs during their childhood. Why it occurs? Because of sharing some common items. Like if, if it is a joint family or if um, some any other person infected in the family. Okay. So, this infection easily spreads from one person to the other person by sharing the dining utensils. For example, sharing the spoon, sharing their uh, cups, teacups, glasses like this. Okay. And through the lip balms, lipsticks, toothbrushes or even through his seeing. So, these are the common mode of transmission of this oral herpes. So, if an adult has this infection, it spreads easily to their kids. Okay. So, the child gets this infection during their childhood itself. Okay. So, here what is the most important thing is this herpes simplex virus after infected a patient person they get transported along their sensory neurons to the nerve cell bodies and they reside in the nerve cell bodies. So, the virus enters okay. So, see for example if this man is having this infection the sore if he is kissing his child okay through the kiss uh, that virus infects the child. Now what happens in the child? The virus now enters the body and it directly enters the transport along the sensory neurons and it hides itself in the neuronal cells. It remains there throughout the lifetime. It won't go anywhere. It remains there throughout the lifetime. Okay. Now what happens now after the baby grows up? Now the baby becomes adult. Okay. Suppose if the boy now having decreased immune function low immunity or he is going undergoing stress tension or is getting more exposed to sunlight or having any hormonal changes disorders so during such conditions what happen due to the trigger due to these triggers any of these triggers the virus it recurs understand so initially it enters the body and it gets hidden in the neuronal cell body and when there is a trigger, it gets the recurrence. Okay. So, this is the peculiar characteristics of herpes simplex viruses. Okay. Now, HSV type 2. So, this is an important sexually transmitted infection. What problem it causes? This causes genital infection. This is a STD, sexually transmitted infection. So, who is having the risk factors? The person having multiple partner. With the prostitution or uh, during having multiple partners so such conditions it spreads 
and for the patients with immature immune system particularly for the aids patient what is aids acquired immunodeficiency syndrome already the patient immune system is weakened in aids so now this herpes simplex virus further causes infection okay so aids and hsv2 they occur together mostly okay so this is an important infection which occurs in the aids patient and here hsv2 infection is more common among women than in the men okay and not only that this infection is inherited from a mother to the child during the birth this is very very important herpes simplex virus type 2 not type 1 type 2 it gets infected inherited from the mother to her child okay so this is called as congenital herpes let us see what is that okay before that let us see what are the symptoms of the hsv infection here the hsv are asymptomatic or maybe very mild so the patient go unnoticed so when this infection is present even hsv type 1 when the skin herpes is present the patient won't recognize it okay so many times it goes unnoticed right so later what happens for some people the symptoms develops that means in the case of genital herpes there will be itching or tingling in the affected areas watery blisters in and around the genitalia this is highly important symptom in the genital herpes so when the patient has such watery blisters look at this picture here these these structures are called as watery blisters okay so if this symptom is present when they go to the doctor by just looking at this um, symptoms by looking at this blisters the doctor identifies this has herpes simplex infection okay that is the peculiar symptom of herpes infection later the blisters get ulcerated that is called blistering source like this ulcerated okay so there will be pain during the urination and bleeding in between the periods apart from the normal menstrual cycle a herpes infected woman she will have bleeding okay bleeding between the periods and swelling in the groin lymph nodes so these are the symptoms of the herpes simplex virus infection okay now let us see the most important complication of herpes that is neonatal herpes or congenital herpes see what is neonate neonate means a newborn baby a newborn baby gets the herpes infection why a newborn is getting the infection because this is coming from the mother okay so if a mother during her last trimester of pregnancy gets infected by herpes so what happened if she won't uh, recognize the infection okay Un undiagnosed or unnoticed during delivery what happens the organism contaminates the vagina and the birth canal so when the baby is coming out during a normal delivery so the contaminating organism it settles on the eyes and skin of the baby so it causes a herpes that is called congenital herpes or neonatal herpes okay so the herpes infection can be transmitted from mother to child during pregnancy or childbirth so pregnancy during pregnancy also it will be there such condition is called congenital if it occurs after the childbirth or during childbirth that is called neonatal herpes you understand the difference okay the babies get infected shortly after the birth okay so why this is happening because the mother when the doctor is asking for any um, signs or symptoms of the herpes during asking about the history of the patient if she doesn't recognize the infection she won't tell it so in such conditions this will occur okay so if initially the doctor recognizes this we could able to prevent this congenital or neonatal herpes okay so mothers may not have or had the symptoms at the time of the delivery so this is the main reason for this congenital or neonatal herpes so out of 100,000 babies 30 babies will get affected by the neonatal herpes so look at the picture you could see here the herpes skin infection like this on the skin of the hip baby okay right so here the most important thing and the problem is this herpes infection is difficult to get removed from our body or by our immune system why 
because you know that the herpes simplex virus when it comes enters they enter and gets hidden in the neuronal cell right it gets hidden so it is very difficult for the nervous system uh, or very difficult for the immune system to clear this infection from our body okay also this infections are associated with the individuals with the weak immune system already the immunity is weak in case of aids patient in case of cancer patient and patient with a transplantation having a steroidal drugs okay patient uh, uh, with the diabetes so like this for these people the immunity is already weak so for such patients for such people the risk for getting hsv is more okay and the incubation for this is 2 to 21 days on average of 6 days clear now let us see how to diagnose the herpes infection so when you see the blistering sores that is called uh, watery watery blisters that is the characteristic feature of herpes right so when this watery blisters is there by looking at this itself the doctor will understand and diagnose this that is called physical examination okay the doctor will say this is herpes viruses to further confirm this we need blood test so take the blood sample of the patient and separate the serum so using the serum we have to do elisa test elisa to diagnose antibodies against this viruses if the patient is infected he may have antibodies in his body right so those antibodies against hsv1 or hsv2 can be detected using elisa antibody screening and even antigen screening can be done using elisa okay particularly if you want only to detect antigen screening that means viral antigen we have to go for pcr polymerase chain reaction or in order to grow the virus we have to do viral culture generally viral culture pcr and all we won't do in the lab uh, for routine screening we do the blood test using the antibodies to screen hsv1 2 or elisa these are the best methods clear now so what is the treatment for the herpes unfortunately there is no treatment for herpes no cure once the infection comes that's it okay so there is no cure but we can prevent it how can we prevent it as usual how we prevent the sexually transmitted infection same maintain personal hygiene use condoms don't share the needles injection syringes okay um, screen the blood before transfusion like this so these are the prevention methods okay some antiviral medications are there but they won't kill the virus but it heals the patient symptoms to certain level for example it heals the source it lessens the severity and it reduces the frequency of recurrences so these are the some antiviral prescriptions the doctor will give of course they will give to reduce the symptoms and the patient suffering but we could not able to completely eliminate the virus from the body once it is infected okay also there is no vaccine for this disease so this is about herpes simplex virus which is a sexually transmitted infection clear now let us see the second most important sexually transmitted infection that is genital warts you know we have warts in different parts of our body we have warts on our skin uh, particularly people will have warts here in the neck region and all okay here this wart is a peculiar thing which occurs on the genitalia genital region so that's why this is called genital warts okay so what is genital warts what is the causative agent for this this is caused by a virus called human papilloma virus in short form hpv human papilloma virus so this genital warts initially it will be raised flat sometimes a small or large so the wart will be raised or flat or bigger or smaller could be any type it depends upon a patient okay so initially the warts will be like this and later the warts grow in its sizes and it becomes like a cauliflower like shape so this is important cauliflower how a cauliflower will be like this shape the cauliflower like appearance okay so once the warts develop into a cauliflower like shape only the person will notice it before that generally many people won't notice this okay so the warts are so small and flat and it go unnoticed so this is important so where the warts will be present the warts can be on or near 
vulva, vagina, cervix or anus in case of female. In case of male, it will be on or near penis, scrotum or anus. Clear? So, see here in this picture, this is the initial what? So, do you say this is a what? No, it looks like a normal pimple, right? So, like this, if it is present initially, people generally, they don't notice it or they omit this as normal pimple, okay? Later, what will happen? The organism multiplies, develops and it becomes cauliflower-like appearance. Look at this picture. Here, this is the cauliflower-like appearance and now the wart is larger in size. It grows, okay? So, this is the characteristic feature of the genital warts. Fine. So, here, it is not always possible for the people to know when they got the infection with the papilloma virus. They don't know when they got infection because it starts like a small pimple and slowly it multiplies and become a cauliflower like appearance okay so the incubation period is more for some people it will be less than one month for some people two months for some people three months like this up to eight months will be the incubation period even for some people the virus can be in the body for many years before the warts develop okay so before the warts develop into a big size the virus present silently and multiplies in the body so people generally don't notice this okay that is the problem in the genital warts now what are the symptoms small flesh colored pink swelling in the genital region so we have seen no in this picture like this pink pink color swollen region will be there so if it is unnoticed then later it becomes like cauliflower appearance and there will be itching or discomfort in the genitalia and sometimes there will be bleeding during the sexual intercourse. So, these are the symptoms for the genital warts. Clear? Now, what are the treatment or how we diagnose this infection? So, the infection is diagnosed initially based on the physical examination. So, when you show this warts to the doctor, by looking at the appearance, the doctor will say this is genital warts caused by papilloma virus. In order to confirm that, what is done? Biopsy. What is biopsy? So, the skin region from the wart will be scrapped. There will be no pain. Okay, just a small scraping will be done using a small blade. They will remove the skin region and do the biopsy for the examination of the tissues and the surrounding viral structures. Okay, that is biopsy. Okay, and this is confirmation. And there is no cure. Again, there is no cure for human papilloma virus. But there is vaccine available which we could view for teenage people from 13 years itself we could view this vaccine okay clear so these are the two important viral infection genital herpes and genital warts so our next lecture will be on other sexually transmitted infection caused by viruses that is hepatitis and aids so if you like this lesson like share comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel neat biology expert thank you